to our guests and viewers for joining us today um, for our 1K uh, webinar. Um, we have these on Mondays, opposite council meetings, and they help you connect to the people and programs running in the background of our lives here in Cape Girardeau. Today, we have Mayor Pro Tem and Ward 4 Representative Robbie Gard and Deputy City Manager Molly Maynard presenting the city's vision and projects that promote good governance. That's the responsible conduct of public affairs, management of public resources, and efforts to transform city government. The council's good governance goals support the successful fulfillment of other city outcomes like health, safety, a strong economy, and improved neighborhoods. Thank you all for being here today. And I will turn it over to Robbie Gard. Thank you, Nicolette. Um, well, welcome everyone um, that's, that's on today. And, and, and Molly and I are tackling good, good governance. And um, when we were meeting before to, to start up um, to discuss the governance, you could really go on and on about the things that council really tries to do to make sure that um, transparency, fiscal responsibility, um, many hearing many voices to get more 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 than just a few uh, to 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 have the right direction for our, our entire city, um, and so. I look at those things like that, and then there's a lot of pieces that go into good governance. Um, one thing that comes to mind is, and, and we had it, uh, is is saying what we saying what we are going to do and doing what we are going to say. And part of that I think of is um, the promised and delivered approach that we've had for our tax initiatives. Um, Cape Girardeau since 1995 has had transportation trust fund taxes every five years. <clears throat> and since even since then, since 2008 and 2018, have had public works um, and our stormwater and um, uh, parks and recreation taxes. And what is different the way we, we do those in our community is that we come up with an idea, staff comes up with an idea, an idea of of a list of projects and then goes to groups and gets feedback from those groups on on if these projects are, are what are what really important to the residents and from time to time we've seen those projects change because of of, um, of what the public says um, what they would like to see what i would also say is those are capital improvement projects and not what i would say um, any opera operating income. It's not like we're going and asking for a blank check from the city residents. What we are asking for specifically are, hey, here is a list of projects that we want to get done. So when I look back over um, since 1995, I look at uh, Lexington and the, and the expansion of Lexington. I look at the water park. I look at improvements to our streets. We know we're not there, but I think if you look at what we, we heard the residents loud and clear, and I think if you look at the uh, Transportation Trust Fund 6 from 2020, what we took to the voters and what they unanimously pretty much approved was that we want to put more repairs, we want better streets, we don't want a lot of new and shiny. Um, so I think listening and seeing that and hearing those things are, are a definite part of good governance for us. Um, the other piece of it, I would say, is that the city council, um, I think a lot of people have a, an idea of what city council's duties are. Um, we help to, devo to, to develop a policy. policy. Um, I, I joke that really the city council has one employee that they, that they work with, and that is the city manager. We really entrust the city manager and the deputy city manager to have the vision of what uh, of what we see and, and work with the city manager and the deputy city manager to make sure that that we are doing those things. The first and foremost, one of the biggest things that I look at within that relationship is the budget um, and <clears throat> the fiscal responsibility and fiscal or fiscal discipline that that we have. Um, and 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 with that relationship with the city manager, sometimes there might be one or two council members that have an idea that we'd like to spend money a certain way. And a lot of times that city manager and deputy city manager will say, you know, really, 
you know, council, that's not really a, a, a the way that we would go. So there, and, and maybe that's not a good use of taxpayer dollars. And, and so there's that great relationship there uh, between their office and the city council to make sure we get, get things right uh, from a fiscal discipline standpoint. Um, I can tell you um, from, and I'm, I'm just gonna talk about governance um, and I, I could talk about, I think Nicolette said it best, a lot of the good governance, um, if you ha are having good governance, it impacts all the other pieces that we want for our city. And so I couldn't say, you know, if we have good governance, then, then public safety and our citizens. One of the, the things from us that we're looking at right now from the city council, as far as a vision is, are streamlining our services. Um, I made mention not too long ago in a forum that, look, I, I for one know that government, and Molly don't kill me, but government go, runs much slower than, than us people in the private, in, in the private sector. Um, and so what we wanna do is we wanna try to, to connect um, what our expectations are and what and ordinances and legal ramifications but we still want to try to get that to, to streamline and, and for that to be, you know, faster for our residents and our business owners. And then obviously I've talked about it three or four times now is the phys fiscal discipline uh, that, that, that we have to have. It's taxpayer dollars. Um, any dollar that's spent, we have to be cognizant um, from, from um, the mayor on down to that part-time employee every dollar we spend are, are taxpayer dollars and we need to spend them wisely. And um, the last thing that we would want for any part in our community is to lose public trust with how we are spending those dollars. Um, talking more about all of that, including re-engineering and, and the process and, um, and our progress and what's going on, I'd turn it over to Molly and let, Molly's much smarter on all of this than I am. I don't know about that, but uh, thank you, Council Member Guard. Um, as Robbie stated, good governance is really the fiscally responsible utilization of resources to fill, fill the city council's goals in a very transparent manner. And as Council Member Guard indicated, one of the most important goals to the council is that streamlined customer service. And um, as a result of that, we have been making some changes in our development services department, uh, specifically inspection services to really streamline the process and make it more uh, customer friendly. That includes the total re-evaluation of, of our operations, our processes, um, our codes or ordinances, the whole package. And it involves a lot of time and a lot of change to get there but eventually um, it will be a better process for all. And, and we're gonna start to see some of those changes percolate into other departments as well. Um, all of this requires continuous evaluation and re-engineering as I stated. And I wanna give you a hard example of how this has worked in the past. Um, and a good example of that is our city hall project. Long before we started building over at the Common Pleas site, we were actually looking at options for City Hall at our current location. And we worked with a team um, to, to look at renovating our existing building, tearing it down and building new. We looked at, I don't know, three or four different options. And ultimately what we determined was the price tag of that was incredibly high, about $20 million. It didn't really get us what we really needed. And we heard from people, and that's a big piece of this too, is the community engagement piece. We heard from a lot of people in the community that said, don't mess with Old Hormer School. You know, we want to keep it as is. And so taking all of that information, we decided to hit the pause button and start that reevaluation, reengineering, if you will. We started to re-engineer the project, and that's what prompted us to take another look at the Common Pleas Courthouse. We had looked at that long ago, but um, weren't looking at it um, with this lens. And so that's really where um, that, that reinvention comes in. We came in with new concepts, new ideas, and, and said, what if, what if we put that piece in between the Common Pleas Courthouse and the Carnegie Library, and that will fulfill our space requirements, our ADA accessibility, 
our security needs and preserve two really historic buildings um, in downtown. And so it ended up being a win-win situation and, and now it's under construction and hopefully we'll be moving in there uh, in October of this year. So that's just one um, example of how re-engineering a process, a project, et cetera, can really save money, um, can respond to community engagement People told us what they wanted and we we were flexible and it adjusted. So that is a continuous process that happens throughout government. And as Robbie indicated, you know, we do move a little bit slower than the private sector. And a lot of that's because we have a lot more constraints in terms of um, how we use our money. You know, our funds are restricted and to what they can be used for. Uh, Robbie uh, referenced TTF, our Transportation Trust Fund, which can only be used for transportation projects. Our Parks and Recreation Storm Tax can only be used for those specific projects. Um, and so we have those restrictions. We obviously have our codes, ordinance, state statutes that we must adhere to. Um, so we are a little bit slower in that regard, but um, we are continually uh, reevaluating everything to make it um, better for all of you. Um, and, and like I wanted to emphasize too, this works a lot better when we have engagement from the public. Um, it helps the city council determine what their policy direction should be. They represent all of you. So the more input they receive from you, the better policies they can make. Um, and it helps staff as well. We help, um, can help us devise processes and functions that better serve you. So it's really important to get engaged. Um, if you're watching this, that's a really good first step and uh, encourage you to get involved with the border commission because um, like I said, that's, that's what keeps the wheels on the local government bus turning. Yeah. And I would say too, to, to add to that, um, we have the, the, we pay as you go. That, that's that's a, another part of those the TTF and the you know we're it's we don't fiscal responsibility fiscal discipline we are not we are collecting the tax and then tackling the project not borrowing the money and paying it back. Uh, so so that's that's another piece that I think is important to note too. Um. As far as this is the part I should have <clears throat> thought more on uh, our council, our commitment and our call to action. I think, of, you know, I when Molly was just talking about getting involved on boards and and um, a commission, whatever you to get involved with, you know, it reminded me about how I be how I started to get involved. And I always thought for one, the, the first start was to vote. Always make sure you vote. Um, if you vote in every election, whether you're on the winning side or losing side, that is the that is to me number one. And you vote. Um, I have I, I can be a little rough sometimes around the edges, but my my true stance is if if you don't vote, don't complain to me, please, because that's number one. Number two get involved at in and what whatever small whether it be the tree board i started out on the golf course board here in cape and and i and and for me it and getting involved at city council what it was was taking that next step about being involved in, in our grand democracy and so you you before you know it you're like yeah i do want to be a part of city council and quite frankly we need more people to want to be involved um uh, the younger generations, it's time for us to step up and, and do more. Um, so that would be that would be my piece. Um, staying involved, make sure to reach out to your council members. Um, even if we don't have the answer, a lot of times, uh, what we do as council members, we have what are called council inquiries, and we fill out a quick sheet on on who to contact and what your issue is, and we send it to staff. And between and and between. Uh, Molly or Scott Meyer's office, they're getting that answer back to you. Um, no, nothing too small, nothing too big. Um, and, and that's part of being transparent and involving. Um, 
Nicolette, I know that's, I don't think there was anything that, but I mean, if you want to open it up to questions or however you. Great. Well, thank you both for your, uh, for your remarks. We do have a, a couple questions here, but just a reminder for our live friends on Facebook or um, Zoom, go ahead and drop your questions in the comments or the chat. And, or, and if you want, you can come on here live uh, with our mayor pro tem and deputy city manager. Um, first question would be for uh, Molly about the city hall project. A lot of folks are kind of excited to see what that final thing will look like. Um, what will the public access or celebration look like um, when the construction is done and, and, and the project is unveiled? Absolutely. So we are looking for a substantial completion sometime in October. That's, of course, with weather permitting and whatnot. We will, of course, have a ribbon cutting for our facility, which we will invite the entire community to. Uh, most likely, we'll have some open houses for the public so you can come in and, and see for yourself um, how we blended old with new. Um, uh, so look for that to happen late this year. Um, and we'll ask for your patience as we continue with the construction. We're also going to have some work being done to Spanish Street and uh, some sewer work on Lorimer. So a flurry of activity downtown this, this year, but it will be well worth it. And we'll invite you all to, to celebrate in the success later this year. And Nicola, can I add something to you? I, I've said this numerous times and, you know, when people maybe don't hear it, but I really, this project, I put, um, I, it's Molly Maynard, the reason why we're to this point and what we are doing. And I thought it, I, her hitting pause and everything that she calculated and listened and, and what she did. And now that we're doing this, like, and I'll never forget when she talked about this idea at a council retreat about using common pleas and everybody, it was like everybody on city council and everybody in the room, staff included, it was like, that aha moment and kudos to you Molly for for doing that and and I and and I you know I think in, we we sometimes especially myself we want to move fast but when it's really important I'm I think of we're going slow because we're in a hurry and so I really kudos to you on that and I I I drive by all the time I, I told the mayor the other day I drive by at least three times a week just to see the, pro the progress on that project. So anyway, thank you, Molly. I wanted to throw that out there. Thank you, Robbie. And, and thanks to the council for having the vision um, and, and the voters for helping with the capital improvement sales tax to make that project come to fruition. Yeah, we, yeah that's right. We had to pass a tax to ensure we could, could do that. So mm -hmm. anyway. Wonderful. Well, and our, our last question, I don't see any more on here. Um, it would be, we'll start with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Robbie. Um, when someone does have an idea for um, how they'd like to streamline services or something out of what they think we should or shouldn't spend money on in the fiscal discipline category, how do you think folks should engage? Do you want them just to, to look up your phone number and text you directly? Should they engage with staff? How do you recommend folks get involved and share their ideas and energy when they have them? There's two, there's two things. I'll answer that question. And there was also someone that put a chat question up Then I can get to that one in a second. But, you know, I've been on council now for five years and um, I've had my personal cell phone on the city's website since day one. And in my opinion, and the, what I urge people call me, text me, any time, I mean, obviously not at 12 o'clock at, at night, but if, you know, um, and I prefer that because they, they get to hear from me and that's part of my, I feel like my service is that I want them to know that I'm approachable, I'm ready to talk to them at whatever time. And, and then I can put in a council inquiry or talk to Molly directly or Scott or staff, you know, or, or and do it that way. I don't, um, I mean, part of good, great customer service is having the personal touch and the personal communication. So for me, I think that's the, the way that that should happen. Um, Ron Levine said to all panels, it can be said that small business is the backbone of the US. What is the city doing to facilitate small business in the city? Um, I love this question um, only because since for the last three or four years, I've been on um, 
a representative of the city of Cape Girardeau on our magnet board. The city of Cape Girardeau invests uh, roughly, let's call it $70,000 a year to um, the Cape area magnet. Um, and magnet is comprised of the city of Cape, the city of Jackson, Scott City, uh, the county, uh, and then ex officio members like uh, the university is a part of that group, uh, both chambers. Uh, obviously, we court, we co magnet contracts with the Cape Girardeau Chamber, and the, the uh, Jackson Chamber is on there as well. The port. Now, that's big and small business. But what I will say is um, the city of Cape has been committed to that group. And I know uh, this year I'm actually chairman of, of that group. And, and we're looking at what, what economic development will look like in a post-COVID world, especially in our area because um, we have a dwindling sales tax um, base. Some things due to um, regional competition and a lot of it has to do with online shopping. So I think it's important for, for all of our leaders um, especially that magnet group to, to know what, what to expect moving forward. Um, from time to time, we will invest in, in, um, in, in economic development and small business initiatives. If we, if, if it's, as, if it's deemed by council and staff to, to be as important as, is uh, what we hope it to be, so to speak. Um, so I, I, that there, I think we've, um, and then I, I will say also, I look at Anna Kangas, I look at Molly Maynard. Uh, Anna is in, I, I don't know her official title. I, I, I want to say it's interim, soon to be, she's, I, I don't know. She's our she's transformation doing, manager. Yeah. Okay. But I look at that, I look at staff in that respect, um, and I see what they do to work with small business owners all the time, figuring out. Uh, what benefits, what things are out there that, that those businesses need to do. Molly, you know, Molly seems to be one that's always, I mean, any business in Cape Girardeau, I feel like she knows them. She's worked with them in some capacity. And, and, and quite frankly, maybe that's part of the vision of council that says, hey, staff, we really want to be, um, we want to have great relationships with our business owners. And that's not that we want to give every business owner everything they ask for. We can't, it's impossible, but we want to have a good relationship with them. We want to make sure that they know that, you know, they're vital to our, not only the city's existence, but um, the existence of, of our ecosystem, our, our uh, not ecosystem, but our economic eco ecosystem for sure. So um, that, I, I think that's a two prong deal. One, has to do with you know a part being a part of a big a bigger group and the other is what we do internally um yeah, Robbie, Molly, if i could yeah let me jump in because i i do want to talk about that a little bit and some of the changes that we've made in our development services department to make it easier for small businesses we have streamlined all of our uh, licensing up into development services so if you come in for a business license or, or whatnot um, you're opening a business, you can talk to staff too about the zoning. If you're going to be adding a sign, do you need an inspection from the health department if you're a restaurant? So we can coordinate all of that in one place. Uh, before um, Anna came, we, that was a little disjointed and, and handled by various departments. And so we're trying to streamline that so you don't get the runaround and we can um, handle all of your needs in one location. Um, we're also trying to make some of that available electronically to perhaps even save you a trip to City Hall because we know your time is valuable and we want to respect that as well. So those are some of the changes that we're trying to make here at City Hall to make um, small business um, better in Cape Girardeau. Yeah, absolutely. For those uh, remarks, I think that was actually the last um, question now and Ron, my apologies, I did miss that in the in the chat, but not seeing any more uh, questions on Facebook or here on Zoom. Um, thank you to our panelists. Thank you to those of you watching uh, live or recorded. Um, if you are on the recorded session, don't forget to reach out to ecape.org slash council slash one cape series to sign up for future events um, and just reach out and let us know how we can help you or what your ideas might be.
Um, our next uh, One Cape webinar is actually uh, next Monday, uh, March 29th at 1.30 p.m. We're going to be talking about parks and recreation and quality of life in Cape Girardeau with former Councilman Danny Esner and our Parks and Recreation Director, Julia Jones. We hope you all can uh, join us for that event. And thank you all again and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Nicolette. Bye, everybody.